Thank you for having me. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Um, this is the book, and I'm going to read my own essay that's in the book. It's called Surely the Soul Sings Always. I had always felt a tugging curiosity about Judaism, but I never knew why until I discovered my grandfather's secret Jewish roots. The fact that we were once Jewish wasn't something we talked about in my family. I learned about my Jewish heritage from a cousin secondhand when I was 10. Did you know our last name wasn't always Phillips, he said. My grandfather never mentioned it. My father didn't either. The omission shocked and troubled me. When I questioned my father, it was clear he didn't want to discuss it. I wanted to know about my lineage. I wanted to hear the story that no one wanted to tell. In the spring of 1942, weeks after the death of his father, my then 20 year old grandfather changed the family name and never looked back. His father had been abusive and he refused to speak about him even when I prodded. I was close with my grandfather who I knew as a sweet old man who laughed at his own jokes blessed strangers, and always had a smile for everyone he met. He was proud of the family he had created. I loved the way he pronounced my name like nobody else, as if it had a Y in the middle. My Diana, you're so pretty, he'd say, scrunching his face into a loving smile with ruddy cheeks and squinting eyes. My grandfather had created a new identity for himself, but also for me. I often wondered what if I had inherited his former name and been perceived as a member of the tribe from birth. Expressing my interest in our Jewish heritage felt off limits. How could I reject my family's chosen religion, Catholicism, to reclaim the one that had deliberately been abandoned? Even as a child, I didn't feel connected to Catholicism. When I discovered I had Jewish blood, it started to make sense. I was born to wrestle with God and life's biggest questions, but questioning the Catholic church was not encouraged. At 12, in the months leading up to my confirmation, I had privately renounced Catholicism, but skipping the final sacramental rite of initiation was not an option. I was forced to go through the motions, including choosing a confirmation name after one of the saints. I did not pick Catherine to remember the patron saint of scribes and spinsters, but to honor my great grandmother, someone I felt close to, even though she died before I was born. As I grew older, I searched for spiritual connection, perusing books on Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, but I never found a spiritual space that felt right to me where I thought I belonged. I became an atheist by default when no other label seemed to fit. I believed I didn't need religion, but as, my, but as I celebrated my 30th birthday, I felt profoundly disconnected. I had been living with a Jewish roommate for nearly a year before I asked if I could join her at services sometime. Is that allowed? Would I be welcome? These were sincere questions. I had never set foot in a synagogue before or met a rabbi or even eaten challah. My beloved grandfather had passed away and I was finally ready to explore my Jewish roots. I attended my first Shabbat service in July 2012, preceded by a picnic in Roxbury Park. I remember taking it all in, families seated cross-legged on blankets, quilting the grass, sharing spreads of hummus and pita, olives, Israeli salad, and braided challah. A smiling man greeted me as I entered the prayer space. Shabbat Shalom, he said, handing me a folded prayer sheet with a quote by Rav Cook. As long as a person is constrained to wait for a time when the creative spirit will inspire her, then she will create, meditate, sing. This is an indication that her soul has not yet been illuminated. Surely the soul sings always. The rabbi had changed the text to use female pronouns and it felt like the words were directly meant for me. Tears welled, blurring my vision, and something in me shifted. 
It felt like my gray world suddenly burst into technicolor. The sky seemed bluer, the sun brighter. The warmth and joy that radiated from these people gathered in community filled me with an unfamiliar feeling. I didn't feel alone anymore. I found my spiritual home. I was not thinking about conversion when I enrolled in the Introduction to Judaism program at American Jewish University a few months later. But by the end of the first session, it was clear that I was on the path to becoming a Jew by choice. Choosing my Hebrew name excited me. My sponsoring rabbi asked if there was anyone in my family who I wanted to honor. This would be a good time to do that, he said. His words reminded me of something I had instinctually known when I adopted the name of my great grandmother instead of a saint. For Jews, the tradition of naming is a sacred act, a chance to honor our loved ones and ensure that future generations carry not only our ancestors' names, but also their stories. My voice cracked as I failed to hold back tears in the rabbi's office while remembering my poppy, Sam, and it became clear I would be named in his honor. There were several strong S names to choose from, but Shira, which means song, resonated most. I realized I had always felt Jewish. I just didn't know that was the word for it. Sitting before the Beit Din and submerging three times in the mikvah did not feel like a conversion, but an affirmation of my Jewishness, officially reclaiming my heritage. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Diana. What an exquisite story. Um, I get to hear stories of um, incredible people in our community and beyond who are discovering that they're actually Jewish. Um, but I don't think our community gets to hear those stories enough. And I thank you for sharing yours tonight so beautifully. And I know that there are many um, here tonight um, who can feel a resonance with your story in one way or another. And um, maybe even feel some, you know, I, I felt some nostalgia for the Roxbury Park gatherings, which we'll get to have soon again. Um, uh, but thank you for your story, for um, showing us that light can be found inside and it can also be found within the stories of our families um, if we go and look and ask questions. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is beautiful.